It's eight hey. o'clock. All right, we're live on air. So let's see. Um, people should be able to join. Okay, we have four people in there already. Cool, awesome. Hey. We can see the Hello. attendees number coming up. Oh, 10. Yeah. All right. What's up, everybody? Hey. So, um, hi, let's, let's test the chat box. Nice. Can you see the chat box? I can. Oh. Hello. Hello, hey, friendies. Yes. Hola, uh, Lydia. Hola, hola. <laughs> All right. Cool. Margaret, Kyle, awesome. Cool. We're just getting, we'll just, we'll just maybe have, wait, maybe, let's just do, uh, let's do five minutes. We just hang okay. out for a little bit, five minutes. We good, David? Yeah. Yeah. How's great. everybody doing? Cool. All right. Look at this, man. Right. This is great. Wow, you guys are really interactive. So, oh. you're. So where are you, are, Lindsay? Where am I right now? I'm in England, in the UK, at home, in my oh. office. Yeah. I see the turtle yeah. in your back. What was that? Yeah, my little turtle that I made years ago when I was in Indonesia. Oh, really? Yeah. Indonesia. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm in New York right now. Yes, you were at the conference, right? Yes, I was in the Polygon conference in New York. We met up with many, many awesome Polygon, Benny Lewis, Richard, Tim Donner, um, Alex, um, Luca. It's just. A lot of awesome people, and um, yeah, New York's cool. And I'm in a and my computer my I'm, I my computer broke down um, yeah. a few days ago, so I'm borrowing my friend's computer, and that's why my my web my, my camera camera doesn't work. I don't know how it works. So, <laughs> ah, Kyle, can you can you see me, Kyle? I think. Can you see Lindsay? Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> can everybody see Lindsay? Let's see, there's a little bit lag. Let's see, anybody can see Lindsay? Uh, let, let us know. Let's see, there's a slight lag in the chat. So That's cool. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we can, we do, we'll be um, very interactive during the, during the webinar. Um, so, so chat with us. Let's see. Okay. Yep. So okay, people can see Lindsay. Yay! Hello. Awesome. <laughs> you can see her. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> good. 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 All right. Um. So now. Um. So. Yeah, Lindsay. So how do? Uh, why don't we? Why don't you do? Uh, let me just. We can just start introducing each other. Yeah. How's that? Okay, cool. So, why don't you introduce yourself first? Yeah. Okay, so hello, everyone. Um, it's um, nice to meet you. It's nice to see all the multilingual yeah. hellos as well. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I'm Lindsay, and I run the blog lindsaydoeslanguages.com purely because I love language. I love to teach language, learn, well, yeah. teach languages, learn you, languages, and oh, just share things that I know and things that I learn along oh, the way oh, on the blog oh, and on YouTube as well. Yeah. And Probably. we're here as well with Brian today. Yay. You may know as the founder of the Add One Challenge. Yep. And um, I actually, we actually let, um, we didn't, we never met, but we crossed paths. Mm. <laughs> this is true. In, in Berlin, called the Gathering. And when I saw Lindsay, uh, I'm in a hostel right now. So, um, so there could there'll be people talking in the background. If you can hear it, I apologize. Because <laughs> I'm in New York, I'm not home. So you hear a little bit of background noise. I apologize for the background noise. Um, so um, I, I always, I remember seeing Lindsay in uh, in Polygon Gathering. She's always running around the camera because she does really good videos. She's always running around the camera with a GoPro and like you know, doing clips here and there and interviewing people. You know. So um, let's see. Sounds like a TV. Uh, I think it's. I think the chat is late because it's gone now. I can't hear any noise now. All the people oh, okay. have, I think, left from from wherever they were behind you. Yeah. Yeah. Gone. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, that was a little light. So that's how I know of Lindsay. I know I see that girl running around. I know that girl. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I find out who she is and I check out her um, uh, video, YouTube, YouTube video, and, and you know, I see a lot of good good things that she's doing. So um, we contact, I contact her and then we talk, and then we, that's why how we put this webinar together. And so let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Brian Paul. I'm the founder of my challenge. The M1 Challenge is where language learners around the world, which is what's happening right now, people from all around the world, um, learn a language together. And the goal of the M1 Challenge is to be able to hold a 15-minute conversation with a native speaker in 90 days. So 15-minute conversation in the M1 Challenge is all about. And I started this in December 2013, so almost two years now. And we have more than 800 language learners around the world who have done the one challenge. And today I'm going to share with you what I learned from the one challenge. The three secrets to epic motivation, effortless study, and achieving any language learning goal you want. And at the end of the webinar, you have the opportunity to ask me, Lindsay, any question you want. So make sure you stay at the end, to the end and you can also have an opportunity to get a bonus at the end. So make sure you stay to the end. And before we jump in, I want you guys to know that we there will be lots of interactions, as I said. So in the chat box, type in where you're from. Your name, actually, actually your name, actually, your name's here already. <laughs> your name's already there. Just type in where you're from and what language you want to learn. So type your answer in the chat box just so just so you know how the chat chat box work. Where you're from and what language you want to learn. So Lindsay. We talked about where you are right now. Is there any language you want to learn coming up? Yeah, you want me to pick just one? <laughs> yeah, just one. Just one. Oh, well, actually, whatever comes to your mind. Yeah. Okay, I think right now, because uh, I'm in a very good place language wise, I've just finished formal study. So that whole kind of academic push harder, push harder dissertation, all of that stuff's just over. So I'm now free again oh. <laughs> in that way, which is wonderful. And um, the first thing that comes to mind is Japanese. Because Japanese. for me last year, yeah, last October, around about a year ago now, I started um, with Japanese. And, uh, and then it just got completely pushed to the side as soon as I restarted um, the university study and so now I'm back and I can I can do that. So I think when I do that one challenge later this month, that will Ooh. be the language I go for. Awesome, Japanese. So I yeah. see the answer coming in now. So people yeah. are from USA, Ooh. people want to learn Hungarian. Oh, oh, Ireland learning Hungarian. I see somebody who wants to learn, um, let's see, Josh, Krista, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. Spanish. Somebody, I saw somebody want to learn Cantonese. Oh man, wow, so many answers coming in. Yeah, nice, nice mix of um, languages and, and places. We're all over the place today. This is cool. John, John want to learn Korean. All oh, right, Croatia. Japanese as well. Hey, Sabrina. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, konnichiwa, leho, leho, dagaho. Cool. <laughs> all right, cool. So, There'll be a lot of interaction where I'll ask you, okay, type your answer in the chat box, so just type it in, and then we'll interact this way. Cool? cool. All right, so let me share my screen to start. Um, uh, presentation. From New York, I'm in New York too. Uh -huh. I'm not Korean, also. Ah, El Salvador. El Salvador, cool. All right, so. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, cool. So let's see. So again, this is not my computer, so <laughs> bear with me. Oh, all right, cool. All right, so the three secrets. So I'm gonna jump right in, all right? So I know time's precious, precious. So secret number one, environment matters. So Matt, how I want to ask you, here's the first question. How many of you have friends that are always eager to do this with you? Let's learn a language together. 
type in yes in the chat box. Do you have brothers, sisters, or parents that would like to, hey, let's learn a language together? Do you have boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, or wife, brother, you know, that would say, hey, yeah, let's learn a language together. Type in the chat box if you have people in your environment say that, let's learn a language together with you. Lindsay? No, just me. Crazy. Just you. On my own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, friends and family and everything are very supportive, but um, no one necessarily, I don't really have anyone that wants to learn with me at the same time. Yeah, Emma in the same situation. Oh, Annabelle, Marina. Oh, I'm not alone then. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not alone. Not um, really. Um, so we got, we got Bonnie, you got one yes, lucky, lucky Bonnie, you're lucky, so you can see. Oh, nice. Ah, so you can see. Same language. That's an interesting one. Yeah, I think that can help as well, though. Even if someone is doing the same process, even if it's a different mm. language, because then you can talk and share. Yeah, totally. That's cool. That must be that must be quite handy, for Lily. So, so as you can see, um, there are some lucky ones among us, but but not many. Most of us, um, for self learners, our environment meaning people who are around us usually don't understand what it means to try to try to speak a language, learn to speak a language. Now, of course, we'll learn a language we want to learn anyways, right? And that's why we're in here in this webinar. <laughs> Even when we have to do it on our own, but we just used to learn it on our own. Now, however, however, there's magic. I mean magic when you're doing something together with a group of people in a positive, um, like-minded and supportive environment right and many of us have done like group projects before or play a team sport before so what benefits did you get from working together with like-minded people people you you have same share the same passion with in a supported supportive environment what benefits did you get from working together type in the chat box so what benefits do you get by working together with like-minded people and in a supportive environment. Lindsay? Okay, something that comes to mind straight away is that very, very recently, I've just joined um, a local netball group. And the idea is that it's netball ah. for people who haven't done it since school. So everyone is in that same mm. situation of not catching the ball from time to time, <laughs> of yeah, um, yeah. not having a clue about the rules, and we're all learning together. And yeah. Thinking about what you just said, it's that same situation. Just transferring that to yeah. a language learning situation is exactly, and and you know the the netball thing. It's like I would never, I've never really cared about netball. It was never a thing. But just having those people there that feel the same as me, and that actually, if I say, excuse me, what is what do these letters on my bib mean? What 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 position am I? What what does this mean? You know, people yeah. aren't going to laugh because we're all the same, and that's. I think it can really really help. Yeah, and so, yeah you, I can I can feel that. Okay, have you um have you um started the class yet already? Yeah, I started a few just a few weeks ago. Yeah, going again tonight. <laughs> I see how <laughs> how did it feel just just knowing there there are people out there like in your in your situation doing something together? How did it feel? Um, it's very very supportive, and you know, like it made me want to go back. Whereas if I went I and everyone knew what they were doing and, you know, then I'd just be like, mm, no, they're a little bit better yeah. than me. And, you know, it's definitely, it doesn't have that same effect. You have to have someone who is relative, which is why I found it so intriguing about, um, there were, I think a couple of people, I think, was it Brad as well? Yeah, said that they know someone who's studying but not the same language. That can, I think, can be just as cool because, you know, you can then come together and say, oh, what did you do this week? And, how did you find that? Oh, that's similar to this language. Oh, my language has cases too. Oh my God, it's a nightmare. You know, you can yeah. share yeah. these experiences together, which is totally. really worthwhile. Exactly. Okay, so Emma said, learn to get as fun. Um, you can speak French, you speak Spanish. Okay, yes. So Nicole's talking about being a language partner, I guess. That's Motivation, cool. Emma said, yeah. It yeah. helps each other just to talk exactly. When you learn doing something together, you stay motivated. Let's see. Okay, so so um, why is this important? Okay, wow. I love learning with beginners, people who are a little better than me. So, 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So I think we all understand why doing something together and in a supportive environment it can be very beneficial. Um. So so let me tell you a little bit how the, my story. Um. When I first started my German challenge, when I first started this at one challenge in ninety in ninety day thing, um, I my first language was that I took on the challenge as it was German. And I started posting my, my progress updates on Benny Lewis Fluent Freeman's forum. And there was this guy named Byron John. Byron John, at the time he was living in New York. And at the same time, around the same time, he was learning Mandarin. And I was learning German around the same time. We started at the same time. And every time when I didn't feel like learning, when I got frustrated, I want, well, when I wanted to quit, I would read Byron John's update and see his progress. And even though we are like halfway around the world, at the time I was living in Austria, so we we're halfway around the world, I get inspired and energized every time I read his progress update just because I know someone is going through the same struggle or the same thing with me. Or I can, I can see his small progress and I just know, just because no, I know that somebody's doing the same thing with me, it, it inspires me. And so after, after I completed my challenge, well, basically my challenge was to be able to speak my ex-father-in-law because my ex-father-in-law can't speak a word of English. So I, I took on the challenge to speak so I, as you can see, I, my, my, my challenge com- was accomplished. And so after I completed my challenge, um, I sent Byron John a message. I thanked him and said, for like, hey, thank you so much for, for posting your progress updates. I may not be ma- it will make it without your, your inspiration. Um, I just want to say thank you. And pretty much right away, he sent me a message right back. He said, Brian, what are you talking about? I was reading your updates. You're, in, you're inspiring me. Whenever I want to quit, I was reading your updates, Brian. So that's when I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool if we can all motivate and support each other and learn together as a community and strive together to the same goal of holding a 15-minute conversation 90 days together? And that's how the At One Challenge got started. So um, what I'm trying to say is, no matter if you are going to join the M1 Challenge or not, surround yourself who are like-minded, um, like-minded people uh, who are possibly learning a language with you. And, and you can do this in many different ways. For example, in your local exchange, you can go to some meetup.com and just find somebody to meet up with. Um, or you can attend a conference and meet more people who are into language learning. For example, I'm in New York for the Polygon conference. I just met um, 400 other, no, I didn't meet 400 other people, but 400 people participated in this conference. So these, all these 400 people are enthusiast about, and enthusiastic about learning language. So, and also, you can also join Benny's forum. So there are many different ways to surround yourself um, with like-minded people learning language. So point number one is, to, is that environment matters. So, Lindsay, do you have any tips or tricks or about surrounding yourself with like-minded people in terms of language I, learning? I think um, one thing that's really useful, and I can't remember, if I scroll the comments, I'm not sure how far down it is, someone did mention this, the idea that, you know, we may not have someone who we can learn with, but there's so much out there online, and that can be, you know, really helpful as well. Um, oh, that's mm. nice. <laughs> you see Carl's comment? Your, your story has in, inspired him. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I think it's also not just the, the like-minded, but also positivity. You know, mm. if you surround yourself with people who are like, whoa, you think you're going to learn German? Oh my God, that's oh, never yeah. going to happen. <laughs> then it's probably not going to happen. And the same thing if you tell yourself that. You know, yeah. there has to be the, the like-mindedness, but also just the supportiveness. Yeah, totally. If, if there's no one there that wants to learn directly with you. Does that make totally. sense? That's why yeah. I said like-minded, positive, supportive environment. Absolutely, you know? yeah. Because yeah. as I said earlier, most of, most of our immediate environment, they don't understand. So they mm-hmm. want to be supportive, but they don't understand. Sometimes they say things that they, they don't understand. You know, so it's just not, that's why... Yeah, so I totally understand. Supportive, it's very important environment, not only like-minded, supportive environment. So that it makes a big difference when you actually surround yourself with these kind of people. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, um, so the secret number one to stay motivated is the environment matters. And I want to leave you with this quote. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So this is one of my favorite quotes. So that's secret number one. So secret number two is future. So secret number two is how motivated you are today is determined by what's in your future. Um, okay. Um, okay, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting distracted a little bit about the chat. Okay, I'm going to keep going, okay? So secret number two is how motivated you are today is determined by what's in your future. What the heck does that mean? So let me give you an example. Okay, it will be this will be very clear soon. So, who's here has been on a date with someone that you really like? So type in the chat box. Just say yes or no. Who's here has been on a date with someone you really like? Lindsay, have you been on a date with someone? Oh, okay, good. I see yeah. you raising your hand. Put a ring on good. it. <laughs> oh, put I a ring I... on it. Oh, I... <laughs> Not on the first date, I should say. That, no. <laughs> Just the first date. When you do it on the straight away. <laughs> oh, man. But, but it started with the first date. It started yeah, with a date. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm glad that you've been on a date. And then eventually, so, and this, this lucky person, you know, and, you know, you're lucky also. And actually, I want to put a rain on it. So that's cool. Okay, people are coming saying yes. You've been on a date. Good. All right. Good. Good. If you haven't been on a date, don't worry. You can. We can. You know, if, if there are two no's, we can match them together. Maybe. Nice <laughs> um, husband. Yeah. Nice. Cool. <laughs> All right. So now, now I want you to think back. Think back the first time you're about to go on a date. You're just about to go on a date with someone you really like. And um, let's just say an hour. One hour before you have, you're going on a day, your date that you, with someone you really like, how did you feel? So tell me how you feel in the chat box one hour before meeting with your date. Lindsay, how did you feel? One hour before meeting with someone that you really like. Hmm. Excited, nervous. Excited, probably, nervous. Yeah. Probably thinking, oh, I need to blow dry my hair. Oh God. Oh God, I need to blow dry my hair. <laughs> oh, my nails look awful. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but most, mostly excited and nervous. Yeah, man. See, nervous mixed with excitement, right? Yeah. Looking forward to the to the date, wondering what's going to happen and. And so yeah, so you feel you feel something, even though the the day hasn't happened yet. One hour before, you feel something. Okay, I see people coming in, anxious, so scared. I feel a little nervous, excited but skeptical. I almost canceled. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Totally, healthy and anxious. Yes, yes, totally. Nervous, excited. I see. So, mm -hmm. all right. This compobulated. I like this word. Nice, nice. <laughs> okay. So now we get it. We get a sense of how we feel an hour before our date, right? So now, feeling that way, excited, anxious, nervous. Um, what were you doing? Type in the box, chat box. What were you doing? So, Lindsay, you already said, what are you doing an hour feeling this way? Mm, probably getting ready. For getting it. ready, yes. You know. um, hair, makeup, clothes, um, yeah. getting ready to drive, you know. Get, getting yeah. ready, I guess, is the, the general idea of, of what was totally happening. Totally, getting ready. Yeah. At the same time, you're feeling that way. So, I mean, were you... Were you going like, were you, when you, you know, excited, nervous? We, when we excite, when you're feeling a certain way and we're doing something, it, it, it's different, right? It's very different when you're very excited, um, getting, and like I need to hurry and you blow down your hair. It's a very different experience. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're feeling a little bit exciting and nervous, blow drying our hair or doing makeup. Mm -hmm. And 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 um, so someone's looking at me, having a drink to relax. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. So so having a drink to relax is a great example of um, feeling that way. It's affecting you. That feeling is affecting you. It's it's deter your how you feel is determining your action. You know, you're nervous, so you get a drink to to relax yourself. What do I wear exactly? Yeah. exactly. <laughs> I like what David says as well. Nervous and excited, the same I feel before an italki session. Ah, uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Overthinking to the max. Yeah. Hyper focused mode. Yes. What mm -hmm. do I wear? You know, getting ready to drive. Exactly. Exactly. Now, um, do you know what I do an hour before I do a hot, when when I have a hot date? Let me just tell you what I do. So what I do, I do a lot of push-ups. <laughs> um, I roll up my sleeve, I look in the mirror, I do a lot of push-ups just so that, you know, my chest is a little bit bigger. Now, I don't do this anymore, you know. <laughs> but but that's what I that's what I do, used to do. Now, I hope you guys get get the, um, get the idea of this, is that the date hasn't happened yet. It's an hour away. It's in my future. But it's already impacting how I feel and my actions. Can you see that? Can you see that what's in the future can impact how you feel and your action right now in this moment? So now think about, now that we're going to think about the most boring language learning activity that you can think of. And type it, share with us in, in the chat box. What is the most boring language learning activity that you ever come across? Lindsay, what's your most boring language learning activity that you tried before? Hmm. I think grammar drills. No, grammar drills? That are literally called grammar drills and are just oh. fill in the blank kind of, yeah. uh, what, is, what is this verb ending? How would you change oh. this verb, you know? And don't, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. Grandma Joe, let's see if anybody else have. Um, I'm gonna share what my most boring activity is. So I mean, <laughs> let's look. Let's see what people say. Okay, see. Okay, great. Answers coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Memorizing flashcards. <laughs> yes. Vocab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Studying grandma. Yes. Mm -hmm. Emma. Yes. Totally understand. Okay, great. So for me, the most boring language learning activity is reading a grammar book. And every time when I'm I'm reading a grammar book, this is what happens. I fall asleep. But I thought I have to do it because somewhere I read online some expert, aka expert, said that the best way to learn grammar is to read a grammar book. So what I do, I schedule reading grammar book in my schedule to read my grammar book. And so, no, so for example, like tomorrow I need to read my grammar book. Or actually, like today, let's just say today in an hour I need to read my grammar book. How motivated how motivate do you think I am knowing that I need to read my grammar book in an hour? Not very, right? How do you think I feel right before reading that grammar book? Sleepy. Before I even pick up the grammar book, I'm already feeling sleepy. So if what's in your future can impact you, how motivated you are right now, both positively and negatively, how can we utilize this? If we know that what's in the future can impact us right now, positively and negatively, how can we utilize this? Any ideas? Type in the chat box. Lindsay, any idea? How we can well, utilize this, we know that. The, the, the thing in the future, you know, mm -hmm. it has to be something positive that you're looking forward to. Because, yeah, dread, if it's, mm -hmm. if it's negative, then that's just going to be dread and you're going to put it off and put it off and, you exactly. know, procrastinate. That exactly. Word. 
<laughs> so knowing that, what would you put in your future? Um, not ground drills. <laughs> For you, you. Not grandma rules. What do you do? Sorry. So what? Well, so what? So so if you don't put grandma drills in, in the future, what would you put in the future? Something you said. You mentioned something positive, right? So what's something yeah. positive for you? So something positive would be perhaps, and, and you said you don't like grammar books, but I do, yeah. and I think someone else, yeah, Lily as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are like. I actually, things. yeah, <laughs> I actually yeah. don't mind reading about grammar, and then perhaps like watching a YouTube video trying to explain mm. the grammar. For me, that's a bit more likely to go in my brain than, dung, 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 you know. I see. So I would, I would, yeah. you know, do that. Things that will motivate you exactly, yeah. What, what Great, the answer is so, coming yeah. in. Great, so putting doing what you like to do, like as you said, you know, you like reading grammar book. I mean, everybody's different, right? What what I like, you may you may hate, and what you hate, mm -hmm. I may like, I may love, right? So whatever works for you, and whatever works for me, and and you can see people say, what do you put? How do we utilize this? Put things you care about in the future. Um, okay, change how you perceive the negative possible, but that's a lot more. It's easier to put something to do, put something that you'd like to do in the future. Um, but that's one way to, to utilize this change how you how your perspective, your perspective, totally. Um, deciding what not to do, only plan something that would motivate you. Perfect, put a positive spin on the negative. Got it. Yeah, I can Perfect. see that. Yeah, like if you if you kind of say to yourself, okay, well, I need to do the drama, gamma drills, but I'm going to do it just for 10 minutes, and then yeah. after that, and that's when I'm gonna go and make a drink, or that's when I'm gonna go and uh, go for a run, or whatever you actually like to do. Exactly. You know? And then yeah. reward yourself. Reward yourself. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Great ideas, everyone. So how you can utilize this is to put as many exciting rewards, make it fun, reasons, or even horrible punishment to have you do it. Right. So we can we can play with this many different ways, but the idea is put. So knowing this, just put what can motivate you in in the future. So to do this, you have to put all these things in your future, and they have to be so compelling that they pull you into action today from the future. So for example, you really, really want to go to Japan or something. Or let's say you really want to go to, yeah, you, for example, Lindsay, you really, really want to go to Japan. And you yeah. reward yourself with going to um, Japan if you uh, um, uh, hit a language learning goal. How motivated would you, would you be? Much more so than if I wasn't going to Japan. Exactly. Much more so if you wasn't going to Japan. Exactly. <laughs> so, for example, how this works is, um, in the At One Challenge, I mentioned... Japan, um, and for the for example, in the at one all at one challenge, we join at one challenge. We have a chance to win a win a free round trip ticket to his or her target language country, and we gave away a first ever round trip ticket. Um, in doing the at one challenge finale, and this is the three finalists and the three polyglots. We have Richard Simcock with Judith Mayer. And we have Benny Lewis in this call, and we have three of uh, three finalists. And the winner was Jake Brown. Now Jake is 14 years old. He lives in Australia, and he took on Mandarin during the At One Challenge. And he recently came back from Beijing, China, and he made a short video after going to China. So let me see if we can see this one. Okay, let me see if I can play this. Video.
So, hello. Hello. Can everyone hear me? Okay, back. So I, I stopped the video because I this I I realized that this is a very long version. This is like three minutes. I had a shorter version, but I put in a long video. But that's okay. You get you guys get that. So Jake went went to China. <laughs> Jake went to China. Just imagine, just imagine you're a 14 year old. You just finished learning a Mandarin for 90 days, and you have the opportunity to go to China to practice the language, and meet the culture, eat the food. And if you ask Jake. If the chance to win a free round trip ticket to China has something to do with how to, to help him stay motivated, I'm pretty sure he would say yes. So, secret number two, so that's Jake. Secret number two is how motivated you are today is determined by what's in your future. So, put as many exciting things, killer awards, rewards for yourself, or horrible punishment, with a specific goal and an end date in your future. So compelling they will pull you into action today. So that's secret number two of how to stay motivated. So secret number three, your word. Utilize the power of your word. Okay, I will explain this, of course. So who here use Duolingo or Memorize? Type in the chat box, yes. Lindsay, I see you raising your hand. Do you use both or do you use only one of them? Mostly Memorize, mostly Memorize. Mostly I've, memorize. I've tried with Duolingo, but... Um, uh, yeah, not not as yeah. cool for me. Totally understand. Me too. I'm on the same boat. Yeah. Um, dueling. I do usually only when I when I want to just do passive stuff. Like you know, I'm very tired. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I don't really like going to study, but I want to still surround like you know fulfill my what I said I would do. So yeah. I'll just do Duolingo for 15 minutes or something like that. <laughs> um. Yes. Okay. Great. Sometimes both Duolingo. Great. You didn't. You didn't both. Okay. So great. So um, then I, I'm pretty sure that most of you have um, a hot streak before. So have you had a, so most of you had a hot streak. Have you had a hot streak before, Lindsay? Uh, on Duolingo. Or, or Memorize. Yeah. On Memorize, yeah. On, yes. on Memorize, yeah. I constantly use the goal, daily goal. Great. Check. Yeah. Great. So <laughs> Duolingo. Okay. So great. So now let's, let's, let's ask this question. Why does hot streak work? Work? Why do they work? Type in the box. Tell me why you think hot streak works. That helps you stay motivated. What do you think? What? Why does it work for you? For me, okay, uh, bringing it slightly off of drilling and memorize, but I, mm. I use an app like for my daily to do list when I'm working at my desk called Swipes, mm -hmm. and they have the Swipe. same thing where it says, "Woo, your to do list has been done for one day in a row." Oh, and nice. then yeah, so then if you if you like forget something, if you miss something, you lose your streak. And so it's that exact mm. same thing. And um it's really motivating because you just think like, oh, and even if you just move something to the next day, you know, it's your day is clear, boom, your strike is, is still is uh your streak, sorry, is still is still going strong. And so it's motivating because it makes you want to do more to mm. keep that to get a higher, higher streak. You want to do more? Yeah. Oh, that actually, that's a that sounds like an awesome app. By the way. What's? Oh yeah, it's really cool. Yes, yeah, wipes. It's called. Yeah. Really good. Cool. Okay. It's like okay, great. Kyle said it's like challenging you to beat it. And Margaret, uh, Krista. Ah. Said, okay. Um. Somebody said it's it's really good. Like you know, two point two to stay on the same site every day. Totally understand. Mm. But we just we just talking about why does hot street work? So that makes it easy. Okay, it's like chat. So it's one of the reasons. Okay, exactly. So all these answers are correct. Like challenging yourself, and um, you want to keep going. Um, okay, thanks for introducing memorize. Okay, good. Um, okay, all right. So we're gonna go. On. Okay. So, what I invite you to consider is this: your streak got started because you said this to yourself. Why does it work? I'm going to do a memorized lesson today. That's how it got started, right? I'm going to do one memorized lesson today, or I'm going to complete my to-do list today, right, Lindsay? Mm. That's how it got started. And 
how do you feel once you completed completed that lesson that day? Uh, so if you say you're going to do a memorized lesson that day, and then you actually did it. How do you feel? Lindsay, how do you feel? Good. Good? Okay. Like, for okay. example, yeah, you feel great, yeah, right? So you go like... Absolutely. And with, with memorize as well, I like to do it. Um, yeah, exactly. Like the, the mean boy. Woo. Yay. Yeah. You know, you go like, yes, I did it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Because you did what you said you would do. Of course, you got stuff done too, right? At the same time, for memorize, you know, you said you did what you said to, and you also at the same time made a little bit of progress in your language, so you mm -hmm. felt great. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you do this for five days. You did what you said you'd do. Let's say you do this. You got a hot streak going on. Now you feel even more amazing because you did what you said five times in a row. So what I'm what I'm pointing at is that when you're doing what you said you would do, it will give you power, satisfaction, and confidence about yourself. And another way to look at it, when you do what you say you do, you give power to your word. Are you with me, Lindsay? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I find as well something that I always do with memorize is I tend to yeah. do it at breakfast time. So it's first thing in the morning, meaning that I do the thing that I said I was going to do straight away at the beginning of the day, and then the rest of the day is going to be great in theory. <laughs> in theory, because you know I've started on yeah. on a good note. Does that make sense? Totally. You yeah. just gave yourself. You just gave your words some power to start the day. Mm. Exactly. Right? So you, you gave yourself some power, satisfaction, and confidence. You said, yeah, I did what I said I'll do. Let's start up a good, good, let's start up a day in a good note. Yeah, that's it. Right? Awesome. That's a great example. Now, with that, you can give power to your word by doing what you said you would do. How can you give away? Now, for example, you tell yourself, oh, oops, I'm not supposed to click on this one yet. <laughs> For example, you tell yourself, I'm going to the gym to work out at 5 p.m. And 5 p.m. comes around, you're very busy on mm -hmm. Facebook. Then you tell yourself, oh, I'm tired. I'll work later. I'll now, but no matter what, you're, how good you're how do you feel about it? You know, to do what you said you would do. You feel like crap, right? I should have went to the gym. I'm so lazy. Because deep inside, you know you could have went to the gym. And the, and the another funny thing is that, not funny, but interesting thing to look at, do you trust yourself next time when you say you go to the gym at 5 p.m.? Would you trust yourself if that happens to you, Lindsay? No, right? No. So... We now know that we can give ourselves power. So now we can, we now, so I think you get, you got that point. So do, when you do what you say you do, you give yourself power and confidence. And when you don't do what you said, when you don't do what you said you would do, you take away power your word. Now, the reason why this is important, why I'm saying this is because imagine a life when you say X and X happens. Imagine, you can say to yourself, I'm going to have a 15-minute conversation in Mandarin in 90 days, no matter what. And this 15-minute conversation happens in 90 days. How cool would that be? And how would you feel about yourself if, if this 15-minute conversation actually happened in 90 days just because you said so? How would you feel, Lindsay? Type that in the box. How would you feel if that actually happens? Really good because you know you you know you say X and X happens. You say I'm going to do this by this point. It happens. Mm. You've achieved it, and so you feel like you can achieve something else. So then you exactly. achieve and you go on to achieve something else and achieve something else. In 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 probably in our case, I imagine um, a lot of us like to learn more than one language. So you uh -huh. know you learn one language to a certain level. You think, oh well, I did that language. So now I, uh -huh. there's no reason why I couldn't learn that other language. You know, and it snowballs. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. 
So this applies to everything in life. Mm. So now you may not keep all your words. That's why it's a practice. You know, this is a practice to getting, you need to get practice to get yourself back up and continue to go back. Because, you know, sometimes we say, X, sometimes yeah. have, sometimes, you know, things get in the way. But you get yourself back up and, and start building, giving power to your word again. You know, just because you gave away your power, it doesn't mean you, can get it, you can't get it back. So how to get it back is just say X, okay, I'm going to study for 30 minutes tomorrow, today. And then you do it. And then that's how you give yourself power back again. It's a practice. Ah, a weight lifted off your shoulders. I like that, what Crystal said. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. If you give yourself power, you feel satisfied. At the same time, something, oh, your weight lifts. So as, as you said, Lindsay, once you, once you finish your memorize lesson mm. in the morning, you know you don't have to do it. You know you got that out of the way, right? So that's the same feeling. Nicole said, flying in the sky. If you can have, you, have, you say X and X that can happen. Or for example, 15 minute conversation in 90 days. Exactly. I said, you may not keep all your words. It's a practice. Um, you, you may not get every result you want, but I promise you, if you practice giving your 100% and giving power to your word, you get a lot more results than you ever than you ever thought possible. Annabelle's got it right as well. Motivates you that anything is possible. Exactly. And that's so exactly. true. It does. You know. Exactly. Like I said, learn this language. Why not this one? It just. It really. It really is true. It slow. It snowballs because you're giving oh. yourself. So you have evidence. So. I'm going to. I'm going to invite. I'm going to show you how you can imply, use this. Giving your. How can you practice giving um, power to your work in in terms of language learning. So how you can do this is create a weekly goal of the time that you spend on your language. For example, you start very small. This is very important. You gotta, you gotta start very small, okay? Because remember, you can also give away power to your weight, give away um, your power, right? So you start small. So you gain, you get your power a little bit at a time. It's like a video game, you know? You, you, you build up your little yay, one yay, little yay at a time, you know. And so, for example, you say, I'm going to do five days a week, 30 minutes a day for 90 days. And you take this on as a challenge. And this way, you're practicing giving power to your word to get confidence and fulfillment about yourself. And at the same time, advancing your target language, power confident language. How cool is that? What do you think, Lindsay? Is that super cool? Super, super, super cool? Can I say super, that? Yeah, super, super, <laughs> super cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I think, yeah, definitely. I, I love what you said about um, starting small as well, because yes. I think there is, uh, I was saying about the netball, there's a lot of totally. parallels that can be drawn, I think, with exercise and with language learning. And if you just decide, okay, I want to start running. Okay, let's yeah. go and run 10K. Not going to happen, probably, exactly. if you've never run before. You know, so if, you, you, know, if yeah. you say, I'm going to start learning Korean, and then, okay, well, let's do three hours today. Oh, this is tricky. And, and that you can't maintain that. And so, totally. the, but, you know, if you start small and then you build that power, like you said, and, and we've said about the, the, uh, the idea that you feel empowered and then you feel like you can do more, so then you can increase that time that you spend. And I think that's, exactly. that's, that's really, really important. Exactly. Now, what I've realized in the Add One Challenge is even, even if you just do 30 minutes a day for five mm -hmm. days a week, this snowballs in 90 days. And if you feel really comfortable about it after 30 days, you can, uh, you can increase it, right? And so you're giving yourself power and... And, and, it's, and, and exactly what you said is really great. I think it's really great what you said. When you say three hours, you may be able to do three hours for the first two days, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't maintain that for 90 days. And then once you start, when you, once you can't keep up, you're giving away the power of your word. And that's not what you want to do. So you start small. So starting small and giving your power, giving power to your word a little bit of time is very important. So that's why I recommend, or maybe, Five days a week or seven days a week, 30 minutes a day. If you can do one hour, five days a week, that's gold. For 90 days, that's gold, you know? So power confident language, super cool. So that's the secret to epic motivation. 
Um, number three, to utilize your power, the power of your word to stay motivated while you're learning a language. So to recap, secret number one, let's see, environment matters. Put yourself in an environment with like-minded and positive communities who are striving for the same goal. Secret number how motivated you are today is determined by what's in your future. So put as many reasons, killer rewards, horrible punishment, whatever works for you, in your future. And they are so compelling to you that they will pull you into action right now from your future. Secret number three is your word. Practice giving power to your word by starting with small goals. Build it up a bit at at a time and give yourself confidence and fulfillment about yourself at the same time advancing your target language so these three secrets will not only empower you to stay motivated in your language learning journey if you take it on practice it and apply it to your life it will also help you to create the life that you love what do you think Lindsay I think it's so true it's so true because a lot of the time um, you know, you, you, you think, oh, wow, I really want to learn this language, okay? Um, let's say it is Italian. I really want to learn Italian. I'm going to be, I want to be fluent in Italian. Okay, great. How, how are you going to do that? What are you going to do? Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to maybe, you know, I need to speak yeah. a bit. I need, to, I need to read some stuff, yeah. listen to some. Mm. That's useless because there's nothing, like, actionable there. You know, like you said about the weekly goals, for example, so rather than just say, I want to be fluent in Italian, you say, okay, I want to be able to have a 15-minute conversation in mm. Italian. And mm. to do that, I'm going to do this this week and that next week. And mm. by this point, I'll be able to do this much, you know, and you, you kind of, you, you, you know, steps, essentially. Your, your goal isn't like at the end of a line. Your goal is at the end of a set of, of, of steps, if you like. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. It's one step at a time to where you go. Mm. And this, as you said earlier, you, this can apply to anything you want to do, you want to achieve, and, and anything that you want to learn in your life. You create the life that you love. Mm -hmm. So, has all of these three secrets in it, which is why it works. <clears throat> no matter language from scratch or adding one level, you don't have to start a language from scratch. You, you can. You, you want to add one level to it, that also works too, where different people doing different things in that one challenge. So let me see. Let me click on this one. You can start from scratch or use your whatever language you are you want. And this is what you so if you take on that one challenge, this is what you get. Uh language. 90 days at one challenge course. Email support. When I say good day. So wait, this will so I have this, I get this how you would feel, you know, <laughs> or like in 60 days where you are. So I'll design a course um based on that. And I'll give you pointers or tell you like what's coming up. This is what you can be aware of. So that's what I mean by the Add One Challenge course. You get that? And there are many challenges within the Add One Challenge to keep people motivated. For example, um, for example, what you do is um, and see who, which team can create the most sentences. So it's like a sentence meeting. Now, at the end of like maybe like that, we'll see who, which team create the most sentences and the most sentences team wins. We win the prize or something. So we have many challenges in assignment in integrated in our challenge. We have burning questions, Google Plus Hangout. What happens is each month we'll, we'll have, a, we had Polygon with Benny Lewis, we had um, uh, we had, uh, Burning Hangout with um, Richard, Oli. Richard Simcock, Ollie Richards. So you can directly ask your burning questions directly. You can interact with them, you can ask your question 
directly. So that's one thing that you, another thing that you get. You get a tr accountability tracking sheet. This is where we track our progress. You will not learn more about it, but this is how we um, keep track of our um, And we have unique language learning resources. What do I mean by unique? Um, because everybody did that when challenged before. In uh, the, these resources are compiled by from the people who's so they know exactly what you for, for example a list of top five teachers broken down by languages so that minimize the time that you need to try on different teachers um, or um, the best the list of best songs the list of best um, TV shows so we have these kind of things because we think about ourselves motivated and, and also we need to have fun at the same time we can't do the same. Somebody mentioned earlier, we can't go on the same site every day. We can't do the same thing every day for 90 days. So we got to think of different things to keep ourselves to, to uh, like, you know, keep ourselves motivated and have fun at the same time. So we have these different kind of resources. And as I mentioned before, a chance to win a free round trip ticket um, to your target language. One person will win. So. The I1 challenge is changing people's life, and I know for sure. For example, Jake, 14 year old that, that we saw we saw earlier, I'm sure he's the, the trip to China opened his eyes, opened his world. Um, Richard, Rich, uh, Kevin Richardson, he's from the UK. He's 46 years old, and in 1998, he, he said to himself when he was in Japan on the way going back to the UK, he said, "I'm going to move to Japan one day, but I need to learn to speak Japanese first and for I don't know how many years. He's still 46 now. 20 something years, he didn't do anything. He would try and then he quit and just until he um, saw the At One Challenge on Benny Lewis' site and he tried the At One Challenge. He did three ch At One Challenge in a row. The first At One Challenge, he gave him confidence. The second At One Challenge, he quit his job. And by the time he did the third At One Challenge, he was living in Japan. So you can see him and his um, wife. Nikki, she's it's Jake. Uh, Jake is fourteen. Years, Nikki's second winner of the um, At One Challenge finale, and she was learning Kamaji, which is really rare. She was able to have a fifteen-minute conversation. So I know this works. I know this is changing lives, and. I want to invite you to consider if you can hold a 15 minute conversation in 90 days, <clears throat> what is it worth to you? And the investment in one challenge is for, it's only $97 for 90 days. And it's only a little bit about a little bit more than a dollar. <clears throat> and the first 30 people who apply will get bonus. So get a bonus. Um, we go into Q and A. If you have any questions, we can go into Q and A right now. But the first few thirty people get a bonus if they sign up. So let me display. So I think right by now you'll be able to see an offer apply now. But in the first third, you get a bonus. <clears throat> can can everybody see the um, offer? A button that you can click. On the right hand side. Okay. So okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So anyways. So all right. So let me just do this. Um, so if you um bonus from from Lindsay. So Lindsay, why don't you tell us about your bonus? Oh, so, um, where are we now? Let's check the date on the calendar. Okay, next Friday, next Friday, I'm releasing my very first online course, which is absolutely perfect if you're upper intermediate to advanced level of English and you're looking for ways to converse more naturally and more informally with native speakers. It's all about phrasal verbs, okay? And it's yeah. called Mastering English Phrasal Verbs Through Story. So it's not just a list, you know, it's not just, okay, blah, 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 here you go, learn. It's actually woven into stories and the stories for each um, verb and for each video all interconnect. 
and it all gets very dramatic at the end. <laughs> so that's uh, that's one of the bonuses you're offering. You mean? Yeah. So the so the bonus will be um, thirty percent off the course price. Got it. Thirty percent off, and then you're launching that next week. Yeah, next Friday. So, <clears throat> next Friday. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So. Dead. Cool. Um, so if you apply and you send me an email back, actually, if you apply, if you if the first thirty people, I I can just give you the the coupon code or something. So I'll just give you from me. Um, you get a bonus. What bonus would you get from me? What happened is, as I t mentioned before, each month we'll do a burning question hangout with a polygon every month, right? So what happens is, um, after I've done so many of these, I realized this questions. We okay. Can repeat that in the background. You mean the bonus? Okay, um, Lindsay, can you repeat a bonus really quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. So the bonus is 30% off my first um, online course for English learners, which is called Mastering English Phrasal Verbs Through Story. So it's all about phrasal verbs, but it's not just standard list, there you go, learn. It's a little bit more interesting. Each verb is, and all the phrasal verbs attached are woven into a story. And each of these videos, each story wraps up and it all gets very dramatic at the end. Got it. Um, okay. so, so my bonus is um, since we, we see these repeat questions from these um, burning question hangout. So what I did was I went through all the videos, I transcribed it and put all the best questions in one package together by categories. So what you get is the burning question package. And that's what you get if you're the first 30 people who apply for the Zen One Challenge. So click on the button when you see the you see the offer. And that's it from the and the first 30 people get that bonus. So that's it from that's that's all for the let's see, apply that way. So if you can't see the bonus, you can also type in the add one challenge.com slash yay. <laughs> And so now let's go into Q and A. Okay. You guys have any questions for us? I noticed it's a little bit. It's it's already one hour, so we will just do a little bit of Q and A. Um, do you have any questions, Lindsay? Um, there was a question earlier. Let me see if I can find it in the comments. I think was it Lydia? It might have gone now. Um, I think oh. she asked. Yeah, Lindsay, I, I think that you would do that one challenge too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I am in Japanese. Yeah. So, oh, so so Lindsay will also do that M1 challenge with you if you join the M1 challenge. This M1 challenge. So, yeah. do you have any questions about the M1 challenge, Lindsay? Um, yeah. So with the mini challenges. Yes. Um, you mentioned there's one about sentences. Is that done in groups? So is that with people that are learning the same language? You have to create sentences together? Um, no, not necessary. Some people, okay. but you may, you may, mm -hmm. but not necessarily because we just, um, the, the point is how many sentences you can create. So uh -huh. um, you could, but you see other people's sentences because it's all on the, on the spreadsheet. So you can see uh -huh. how other people, what sentence people are making and stuff like that. How would you plan to study vocabulary and keep you motivated when you know you'll not be practicing your talking for a long time? Mm. That's tough. Yeah, when you know you're not going to actually be using the language, it can be quite hard. I, I agree with that, David. Um, I would say that it's about perhaps it's, it's, you know, maybe if it's not a case of, oh, well, you're going to um, actually go to the country and use the language or you're going to meet the people and use the language, mm -hmm. if you set, can set yourself something that is um, perhaps smaller but still related to that. So if you say, oh, well, by this point I'm going to, uh, I want to be able to buy this next book that is of a higher level that I can't read and understand now. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I want to be able to go to, um, for me, for example, I'd love to be able to go to that Japanese restaurant and, and mm. speak to the, the waiters and the waitresses in, in Japanese. Yeah. You know, so it's these things that you can do that are perhaps 
a bit more local because there's always um chances now um you know even if you can't go directly and speak face to face physically with people you know online there's there's so many things you know you can use apps like um, hello talk or tandem mm. where you can find people to communicate with and practice in real life but via a, a digital device if that makes sense it's kind of the next best thing i guess which which could help i hope that yeah. answers so um quickly answer this question for me is it's like um it's, it's the question of like we all want to be fluent and that's mm -hmm. like so far away right how can we keep myself motivated to learn how does this is the, the kind of like tedious vocabulary like dog or like you know how can we keep ourselves motivated so what i do is is i start very small like how what we said before start small just write down very simple things of what you want to say when you imagine you're meeting with somebody and say write down this like how are you today good morning and then just start small and then at the same time what i like to do is not only writing down what i want to want to learn i go on i find a language partner on go on i talk i and learn how to say those and in learning what you want to say you learn vocabulary that you want to learn so that's that's how that's the best way that i can I, yeah, I, that, that's the best thing. I, think. I think as well another thing like you say learn the vocabulary that you want to learn you know there's no point if you think oh well I need to learn vocabulary I don't know when I'm gonna actually use the language so I'm just gonna go and find a course on memorize or Duolingo or whatever these are the words it's given me these are the words I must learn no, not necessarily because you know if you're not for example a mechanic and you know one of the levels in that memorized course is about mechanics in your foreign language yeah probably not going to be too useful you're probably gonna be wasting your time a little bit with that you know so think about what you what you enjoy in your own language what you talk about in your own language what you do in your own language and transfer that vocabulary I'm always um, exactly. you know when I walk around I think oh well, I love doing this but how would I say that in that language you know because that doesn't come up in my in my uh, textbook or whatever yeah so, yeah you know, working in your own world to transfer your world and that vocabulary that goes with that to the language. That can make it a little and bit more get, motivating. Totally, and you'll get there eventually. You just keep, you can keep at it. Absolutely. Okay, so Cal, I'm torn between two languages for the challenge, French or Hungarian. Mm. I'm already at an intimate level in Fr French, but need to improve on advanced level within the next year. I'm an absolute beginner in Hungarian, but that's also an extremely important language for me to learn. So Kyle, um, people who join the Amazon challenge are always in your, in your, is a dilemma, right? We always want to learn different languages. <laughs> so, um, but at the same time, um, we, we don't allow people to do, learn more than one language. That's why I said at one, because we know that if we focus our, or keep our, all our focus in nine days, we'll get, we'll get a lot further in that one language than trying to dibble in two languages at the same time. So just pick one of what's, what speaks to you? What do you really want to learn right now? And only you can answer that question, Kyle. So just go with it. Go with what speaks to you. So Mark asks, do people who take the m challenge typically choose the language they want to learn fresh or built upon one they know somewhere already? We have, we have a group of people who are doing both. Not, I mean, like we have people who start from absolutely scratch or we have people who are starting from absolutely scratch and learn the first ever foreign language. We also have polygots who can speak five, six, seven different languages and all want to advance on take on uh, advance on one language. And we have all different kind of people, like Lindsay, and she's doing she's doing that one challenge. She's a different level. I'm a different level. So we have different people, and that's what's great about that is we can all share our own experience. And that's so and it's really up to you um, if you want to start from scratch or you want to add one level. Do you think the challenge is better for one of those situations I just described? So starting off the very beginning and improving them. Um, again, it's totally up in both ways. So remember, we are. I'm helping you to stay motivated to learn consistently for 90 days. Let's see. So it's up to you how you want to do that night, use that 90 days. So the most important thing is what's important to you. Is learning Hungarian more important to you, or is advancing your 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 la your French level more important to you? And just go with what 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 comes up first. Whatever comes up first is usually the answer. Usually, what's come up, what you really want comes up first, and that mind just kind of kind of.
kind of battle ourselves. Like, you know, you, should, you know, you should do this, you know, next year, blah, blah, but, but usually what you really want is for your first thing that comes to mind. So what I would say is probably go with the first one. <laughs> Can I sign up at your website or only doing this webinar? You can't sign up on my website. When you're on my website, you need to sign up to get notified when it opens because it doesn't open. The thing is we need to start everybody at the same time. Everybody start on day one together and at the same time and together on day 90. So everyone with Edwin Sean 11 will start and start at the same time. So whenever we open, we'll send you a notification. And that's it. I sign up, thanks, great, awesome, great. All right, so I, I'm sorry that we went over time for 10 minutes. That's my responsibility. And um, I want to thank you, everybody who participated. And I want to thank Len, Lindsay for, for having me on doing this webinar with you. And that's it. Anything else you want to say, Lindsay? <laughs> you got one more question. Do you speak oh. any Korean, Brian? No, I don't speak, I don't speak Korean. Oh. No, I can say Annyeong, I think. <laughs> I think that's Annyeong. Cool. Cool. I can say Saranghe, I can say Bago. Uh, I, I know how to say that means I love you, and also that also means uh, stupid Bago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I know in Korean. Okay, uh, Lindsay, anything you want to say to you, to the audience? Uh, just thank you very much for for coming and taking the time to be here with us today. It's been it's been lovely to uh, to chat and to get to know you all a little bit. So yeah, I hope you found uh, what Brian said very useful. Yeah. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you, all you on the Add One Challenge at the end of this month. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.